okay so first what is meant by sewage so sewage is nothing but the liquid waste that is composed of waste water that comes out from the domestic industrial and groundwater waste that is called as sewage so sewage means the waste water that comes out from the domestic usage industrial usage as well as the groundwater waste all together comprises of sewage so how the sewage treatment has to be carried out so the domestic waste that comes out it contains heavy load of biologically oxidizable impurities it consists of pathogenic bacteria bad color bad smell annoying smell right if such waste water is discharged into the water sources like rivers lakes and seas then definitely they will get contaminated so because of this contamination it leads to the several effects like depletion of the dissolved oxygen takes place so as the dissolved oxygen will get reduced then the survival of the fish and the aquatic life will undergo problematic so destruction of the fish and the aquatic life will take place and also the bad smell and that color will affect the quality of the water and the bacteria the pathogenic bacteria that will be present in that kind of contaminated water will cause the waterborne diseases therefore domestic sewage needs to be properly treated before it is discharged into the natural water right so before the water is sent into the natural water this kind of waste water or the sewage water has to be properly treated so that the organic material or the suspended matter floating matter and many other things like pathogenic bacteria ammonium salts phosphates all these things are completely removed and then it is subjected for the entry into the natural water so how do we carry out the treatment process for this kind of sewage water so the sewage treatment is carried out in three stages so the first one is primary treatment the second one is secondary treatment and the third one is the tertiary treatment so primary treatment involves the preliminary treatment of that water so once the water is primarily treated then it is sent for the secondary treatment once the water is secondarily treated then it is sent for the tertiary treatment and finally after the tertiary treatment whatever the quality of the water that we get that waste water will be almost equal to that of the potable water potable means drinking water so how this st various stages or the steps of the water treatment is being carried out let us see one by one so primary treatment primary treatment involves several steps like screening silt and grit removal oil and grease removal and sedimentation so what is screening so in water we'll be having several large suspended materials as well as the floating matter right so those things are being physically removed with the help of the bar screens or the mesh screens so that when water passes through that mesh all the floating and the suspended matter are being retained so you can see here so this is screening so this is a bar mesh or a mesh screen when water passes through this all the suspended matter are been retained and the water is being passed to the next chamber so from screening the physical process the removal of the suspended matter and the floating matter through this kind of screens the water that comes out is sent to to the next chamber that is where the sand and the grit removal will be carried out so this silt and grit removal means silt means nothing but the mud or the clay and grit means nothing but the broken glasses or the sand particles so mud clay sand broken glass these kind of particles are being removed by 
slow motion of that sewage water through the grit chambers however because of the heavier size of these kind of particles they will easily get settled down at the bottom by the gravity okay so see here from the screening once the water is passed here any sand particles mud clay glass broken glass particles all these being little bit heavier in weight they settle down when the water is passed slowly through this chamber the heavier particles will get settled down and the water that is free from all these sand particles and the glass particles etc then it is sent for the next chamber so next chamber is where the removal of the oil and the grease is being carried out so now the oil and grease removal can be carried out in a skimming tank the tank is called as a skimming tank so oil and grease are converted into froth okay bubbles by passing the compressed air when the compressed air is blown through this skimming tank the oil and the grease which are present in that water will form the froth and the froth is nothing but the bubbles several bubbles right so those will float on the surface which are being skimmed off which are being thrown off from that tank okay and then next it is sent for the sedimentation process now we what all we removed we removed the floating particles through the screen we removed the sand glass particles through the slow motion so that due to gravity they got settled down and also we removed the oil and grease by converting them into froth by passing the compressed air and skimming them off now what else is there in the water very fine particles very very fine suspended particles that are very lighter in in weight they cannot get settled down right so those fine particles are still present so how do we remove them so we can remove them by adding the coagulating agents like alum ferrous sulfate and converting them into precipitate converting them into undergo the process of coagulation flocculation so that they undergo flocculation and becoming heavier in weight they will easily settle down okay we are precipitating those particles we are coagulating those particles we are flocculating those particles by the addition of the coagulating agents like alum and ferrous sulfate so that they are converted into the precipitates which are heavier in weight will get settled down and then the water is being passed from this primary treatment into the secondary treatment so this secondary treatment involves the biological treatment so we have still not removed the organic matter the organic matter that comes from the food stuffs that come from the fecal matter of the uh, animals and the human beings is still not being removed right so those things has to be removed now so that is called as secondary treatment where in which we are carrying out a process called as activated sludge method so this is very very important for your final semester exam so among this water treatment the definite question that can come appear in your video exam is the activated sludge method so here you need to draw this diagram and then explain the entire process with respect to this activated sludge so what is this activated sludge method so whatever the water we get from the primary treatment that water is mixed with the activated sludge with the known quantity of the activated sludge so what is this activated sludge activated sludge is nothing but wet mud kind of thing that contains microorganisms and the aerobic bacterias so here the aerobic bacterias are going to decompose the organic matter 
in this aeration tank it will run depending upon the process for 8 to 10 days or more than 8 days and then the bacteria which are there in this in this uh, aeration tank will decompose the organic matter which is present in that primary treated water and once the decomposition process is completed the water is being collected and sludge being heavier in mass it will settle down and the pure water which is clear from all these organic impurities is taken out it is pumped out so this diagram consists of you can see here this is a tank okay so in this tank we are passing the sewage water from the primary treatment and along with that we are mixing a known quantity of the activated sludge which is rich in microorganisms and aerobic bacteria so this water primary treated water along with the activated sludge is passed through this aeration tank in this aeration tank you can see here we are passing the air inside we are passing the air inside so that we can facilitate proper aeration condition so the bacteria requires the aerobic conditions right so we are facilitating the aerobic condition by passing the air inside this tank and also properly the water is being agitated it is being stirred properly along with that the aeration is being carried out so during this process what happens the bacteria the aerobic bacteria which are present in that activated sludge will decompose the organic matter which is present in the water so after few days this entire water along with the sludge is passed into this sedimentation tank so sedimentation tank what happens here the heavier particles will get sedimented down will get settled down due to the heavier mass so the activated sludge will get settled down and the water which is free from all this organic matter will be at the upper portion so this upper portion which is the clear water is pumped out and this activated sludge that gets settled down part of it is sent for the sludge disposal that is it is buried inside the ground and part of it is sent for the second batch of the water treatment so what happens here let me repeat again the entire process the sewage water from the primary treatment is mixed with the activated sludge which is rich in microorganisms and the aerobic bacteria and then the air is passed inside this aeration tank to provide the proper aerobic conditions for the bacteria and the water is properly agitated as well therefore what happens during this process the aerobic bacteria will oxidize the organic matter or they will decompose the organic matter okay during a certain period of time and later this entire water which is decomposed i mean the organic matter which is present in the water is decomposed along with that whatever the sludge is present all together is passed into the sedimentation tank so in the sedimentation tank the heavier particles will settle down that is heavier particle is nothing but the sludge sludge will settle down and the water that is free from this entire organic matter is pumped out as a clear effluent sample and this sludge part of it is sent for uh, underground burial into the ground for sludge disposal and another part of it is sent for the fresh batch of the primary treated water to be treated in the aeration tank got it so this is all about activated sludge method so now the effluent that comes out from the secondary treatment is having very less concentration of the organic load so it's almost over okay and this water is sent for chlorination 
So chlorination is done in order to kill the pathogenic bacteria, in order to kill the germs. All these things are being killed during the chlorination process. And then the water can be discharged into the lakes, rivers, and the seas. But by chance, if this secondary treated water contains high concentration of phosphates, any colloidal impurities, or the non-degradable organic load, then the water has to be sent for the tertiary treatment. So in this tertiary treatment, we are going to remove the phosphates. We are going to remove any fine particles still if they are present by the process of coagulation and sedimentation. We do the normal filtration process as well as we remove any of the gases like ammonia or carbon dioxide if they are still present by the process called as degasification. And finally, the water is disinfected to kill any of the bacteria if they are still present. So after the tertiary treatment, whatever the water we get, it is containing very, very less BOD, less uh, phosphates. And in fact, it is much clear. It's ultra pure and equivalent to that of the drinking water. So how the tertiary treatment is being carried out? First, let us see how the removal of phosphates is being carried out. So phosphates, they can be removed by adding calcium hydroxide. The phosphates can be removed by adding calcium hydroxide. So when we add calcium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide reacts with phosphate and they precipitate as calcium phosphate at the pH of 10 to 11. At this pH, even the ammonium salts which are present, they are also converted into ammonia. Okay, so how it is being done? So calcium hydroxide reacts with the phosphates and precipitate as calcium phosphate. So at that pH 10 to 11, even the ammonium ions which are present react with the calcium hydroxide and forms ammonia. Thus, phosphate and the ammonium ions are converted into calcium phosphate and ammonia gas. Okay, next, coagulation and sedimentation. So any fine particles, if still they are present. So fine particles means remember that we have to add the coagulating agents for them. So which are the coagulating agents which we commonly use? It is alum and ferrous sulfate. So that these will get precipitated as aluminum hydroxide and ferrous hydroxides. So these coagulants will form flocculation and they get settled down because of its heavier weight. Okay, so all the things which are settled down, then they are sent for the filtration. So in this filtration process, we use a conventional sand filter beds so that the, we can remove any suspended matter if it is still present or any precipitates if it is still present. All these things are being removed in this filtration process. And finally, we still have the gases in that. Like we converted that ammonium ion into ammonia gas, right? So that ammonia gas is still present. Even the water contains the dissolved carbon dioxide in it. So all these things we can remove by using the degasifier. Degasifier means, D means removal of the gas. Okay, so how the gases are being removed here? So I think you guys remember that in the boiler corrosion, for the removal of that oxygen, we used a deaerator, right? The same thing is being used here also. So it is a large tower, which consists of a several layers of the perforated plates. Number of perforated plates will be there. And this hot water is passed through that large surface area perforated plates so that the water when it gets spread in that large surface area plates due to the temperature 
and due to the surface area exposure any gases if they are present they strip out from that water and the gases will go up through the outlet given and the water falls down which is free from the gases so what happens here we have a series of the perforated plates it is a large chamber and externally through a steam jacket the container is being heated so when the hot water get exposed on the large surface area the gas which is present will get stripped out from that water and then water will again go to the next perforated plate which is again a large surface so due to the exposure of the large surface any gas if it is present again that will go out escape out separates out with that water so likewise step by step step by step step one below the other we have several perforated plates which are larger in size okay so the water gets spreads itself in that perforated plate so due to the large surface area exposure and the high temperature it promotes the stripping of the dissolved gases like ammonia and carbon dioxide so now even the gases are being removed by passing them through a series of the perforated plates and exposing the water spreading the water in that large surface area so that the water is separated with that of the gases which were present in that water okay so gases are pumped out through the upper outlet water is collected down now finally we have to kill any microorganisms or any bacteria if they are present in this water by a process called as disinfection so disinfection means the pathogenic bacteria are being killed here so how it is being done so one of the cheap and the effective method cost effective method is the chlorination method so add chlorine to water so that it will form hocl which is nothing but hypo hypochlorous acid which is unionizable plus h plus plus cl minus at the ph of 6.5 so now what happened this hypochlorous acid that is the unionized hocl which is formed due to the reaction between the chlorine and the water will attack the cells of the bacteria and it will kill them the unionized hocl which is formed during this process will attack the cells of the bacteria and it will kill them so the finally the water that we get from this entire tertiary treatment has bod less than 1 ppm ammonium ions less than 1 ppm phosphate ions less than 1 ppm so what can we conclude then the water thus treated is of high clarity free from any kind of bad odor it is having very less biological oxygen demand and therefore now the water is equivalent to that of the drinking water and hence it can be recycled okay so this is all about the waste water treatment or the sewage treatment involving the process of primary treatment wherein which we are going to remove the suspended particles the sand particles broken glass particles any small finely divided particles by the process of coagulation coagulation adding the coagulating agents like alum and ferrous sulfate and also by removing the oil and grease by skimming off them in the skimming tank converting them into froth and then in the process of activated sludge method the primary treated water is sent to the secondary treatment in case of activated sludge the aerobic bacteria will decompose the organic matter and then the free water is sent the water that is free from the organic matter is sent for the tertiary treatment in tertiary treatment we are removing the phosphate by converting it into calcium phosphate by the addition of calcium hydroxide even the ammonium ions are converted to ammonia any Uh, still more present finely divided particles are uh, coagulated again by the coagulating agents addition and then degasification is done to remove the gases 
filtration is being done to remove any of the suspended uh, particles and then finally the disinfection is being done by the process of chlorination so everything is being removed now the water is of highest purity which is equivalent to that of the drinking water okay so potable water means nothing but the drinking water the water that is safe for human consumption is called as potable water the water that is free from the contaminants and which is not harmful for the human beings is called as safe water or the potable water so what are the characteristics of the good quality drinking water it should have high clarity it should have good taste it should be free from any kind of the annoying or the bad smell or the odor it should be a soft water not a hard water it should be a soft water and it should be free from the pathogenic organisms okay so we are lucky enough to get this kind of drinking water but what about certain countries where they don't get this kind of water but instead they are forced to take up the sea water itself for the drinking sea water is highly salty right so can we drink such kind of water no we cannot drink such kind of salt water so in that case we need to remove the salt from the sea water and then supply it for the drinking in such kind of countries so that removal of salt from the sea water is called as desalination so desalination is another important question so here what is desalination and express the process of reverse osmosis can be asked for 3 to 5 marks okay so the process of removal of the dissolved salts from the sea water or the brackish water sea water is also called as brackish water to such an extent that the water becomes drinkable so that the water becomes usable is called as desalination or desalting means the salt from the sea water is being removed so that the water which is free from the salt can be used for the drinking purpose or any other kind of domestic purposes so the method which we carry out for desalination are reverse osmosis and electrodialysis for your syllabus we have only reverse osmosis so what is reverse osmosis so you all know right reverse osmosis means the physical movement of the water that is the solvent through a semi permeable membrane into the solution right so this is osmosis this is reverse osmosis osmosis means what here we have fresh water in between we have the semi permeable membrane and here we have the salt water also called as brine so osmosis means it is the physical movement of the water nothing but the solvent through this semi permeable membrane into the solution so this process is called as osmosis now water is coming fresh water is coming and entering into this solution salt solution but our main motto in reverse osmosis is to remove the salt that is present in this salt water so how can we remove this salt from this salt water so we have to apply the pressure on this salt water side which is greater than the osmotic pressure called as the hydraulic pressure we have to apply the pressure which is greater than the osmotic pressure called as the hydraulic pressure on this brine side on this salt water side so that the solvent molecules from the salt water are forced to pass through this semi permeable mem membrane and enter the fresh water side okay so this is the process of osmosis i mean reverse osmosis so where we are going to oppose or reverse the natural spontaneous osmosis pressure we are forcing the water to go from the solution side into the solvent side 
by applying the pressure greater than that of the osmotic pressure okay so what is reverse osmosis osmosis is the physical movement of solvent through a semi permeable membrane we all know that and this membrane is going to allow only the water to pass through it and not the salts yes if such a membrane is placed in between the brine and the pure water if such a membrane is placed in between the salt water and the pure water so water has a natural tendency to flow through the membrane and enter into the solution side to enter into the sol salt water side due to the osmotic pressure so now this natural process can be reversed by applying a pressure that is greater than the osmotic pressure so that the water from the brine side is forced to flow into the fresh water side so the usually commonly used semi permeable membranes are cellulose acetate or polyamide so these will allow only the water molecules to pass through now what we are doing we are applying the pressure greater than the osmotic pressure so that this water from the salt will enter this fresh water side thus the process which reverses the natural spontaneous osmosis is called as reverse osmosis okay so for this i have a video for you please watch it the core technology used at the adelaide desalination plant is called reverse osmosis first let's explain what osmosis is Osmosis is a naturally occurring process in which a liquid, such as water, spontaneously passes through a membrane. The membrane or semi-permeable barrier allows some molecules, like water through, but other molecules, like the majority of salts, are unable to easily pass through the membrane structure. The flow of liquid through such a membrane occurs naturally to try and even out the salt concentrations between the two solutions. That is, the liquid flows from the less concentrated solution such as fresh water to a more concentrated solution such as seawater when the direction of liquid flow is reversed it's called reverse osmosis by pressurizing the concentrated solution in this case seawater we are able to force water molecules in the reverse direction from the salty seawater side through the membrane to the fresh water side Okay so this is all about reverse osmosis